shoo them out of your mind, shoo them. If you're thinking about someone right now, shoo them. Off they go. <laughs> this is my lyric analysis. Yeah. Hello. That's weird. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay, it's Mazzy. I'm here today to talk about my song, Johnny's Movie, and to go through the lyrics because I thought, what could be more fun than dissecting my internal monologue? Woo! This is Johnny's movie. I wrote it when I was 17, about a house party I went to when I was 16. And it's basically just a very dramatic retelling of a night I went on where my crush didn't like me back. And I felt, you know, I felt the need to write a whole three and a half minute uh, pop song about it. Yes, I wrote the song with two great friends of mine, a guy called Henrik and a woman called Miranda Cooper. Miranda Cooper's actually wrote all of the big Girls Loud songs and Sugar Babe songs back in the day. All hail. If you remember, you're gonna make me, make me love you, or life got cold, it happened many years ago. Either those or any of them, in fact. And that was Miranda Cooper. Genius, hot girl shit. Anyway, let's begin. This wasn't how it's supposed to go. I should be the one you're dancing with. Spinning with a vodka coke, everybody at my fingertips. You know, I hear this and I think about dancing in the living rooms, Darren's party, it's his parents' house. We're dancing to Mr. Brightside. It's a pastime of the ages. It hits that jealousy. Everyone, oof, they feel it, they feel it there. Then you have spinning with a vodka coke, everybody at my fingertips. And this was the era of the vodka coke. This was when you would get the Glenn's vodka from Tesco's, if you know, you know, and you would mix it in a water bottle um, with a bottle of coke. And then you would just wander around this party with a with like a half and half vodka coke and maybe like drink it through a straw if you were gonna be classy. It was rockstar behavior, what can I say? I mean, now I drink gin and lemonade, which is a small step up and I probably wouldn't put it in a water bottle. I was gonna get my coat and baby, you were meant to follow me. If I don't talk about outerwear in some, in some ways, jackets, coats, raincoats, parkers. I just, I have a, I have a love for coats. I think it's actually because taking a jacket on or off and like where you put it and who it goes to, to me feels super personal and actually really intimate. And I feel like it says a lot about a scene and a character. You know, are they, are they giving the jacket to you? Are you giving your jacket to them? Is the jacket on the, on the table? Is it on the chair? Is it on the door? Is it cold? Are they not, are they wearing it? Are they not wearing it anyway? Yeah, I'm a big fan of jackets if you can't tell. And I was gonna act surprised, even though I'd know you wanted me. Now this is a this is um a classic because I actually have never noticed one single thing in my life. Literally, I'm so unobservant. Everyone says it about me, so I would be acting surprised because I, in fact, would probably not notice. It's not like I've been crying. No, there's just smoke in my eyes. I I I I. I would literally rather crush my bones and reassemble them as IKEA flat pack furniture than admit that I've been crying. So. This line is basically just, you know, emotional oppression saying hello there and talks about the very dramatic moment where you're sort of, you're tearing up and it's it's all a lot and you're running into the bathroom and you're like, no, don't follow me and no one's following you. Why would they be following you? But you say it anyway. Because this ain't no John Hughes movie where the girl gets the guy. You look right through me. <laughs> I forgot. You look right through me every time you walk by. I keep waiting for the heartbreak music that's never gonna come. Because if you don't want me, then you're not the one. <sighs> okay, so this chorus is kind of the the main message of the song. And it, I guess, juxtaposes how much I desperately wanted my life to feel like a colour-graded, romantic, coming-of-age John Hughes film like Ferris Bueller or Pretty in Pink or The Breakfast Club, but how my life in reality was just the most boring version of Skins you could possibly imagine. With like zero law-breaking and way more like cows in fields. If you don't want me, then you're not the one. I just want to emphasize this lyric because honestly, 17 year old Mazzy was, was on something. She was, she had some thoughts that were not bad because for a 17 year old, I think that is, that is a, that's a big, big statement and it's true. And I hope that when people listen to this song and they hear that lyric, if that's the one they remember, then that would be ideal because everyone should focus on the fact that if the person that you like doesn't want you, of course they're not the one. There's like 8 billion more people. Why would they be the one when there are so many other people that could think you were very sick and wonderful? The answer is no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not the one. Sitting on a bathroom floor, trying to get my composure back. Think I built it up too tall. Knew I should have worn my Adidas. Okay, so it's it's not hard for me to build things up quite tall, considering I am five foot one, 
at a push. But you know, I think we can all relate to this, even the, the taller ones among us. There's a real danger of romanticizing things to a, to a negative level almost. It's like you can build something up so much in your head and you can make people into these whole characters that they're just not, and it's not good for either person. So I think this verse is kind of talking about, yeah, when reality crushingly sets in and everything you dreamt of and all the things you thought were gonna happen do not happen. I had a pair of Stan Smiths and I thought they were the ultimate hot girl shit. I would, I don't have them anymore, but I'm not against requir acquiring some more. I feel like the song, the song demands it. Maybe if I'd reined it in, you wouldn't want to kiss somebody else and you don't owe me anything, so I'm just gonna walk home by myself. So dramatic. I'm obsessed with dramatic 17 year old me. She honestly, she was on something. Yeah, truly iconic. Mazzy, if you listen to the song, this is one of my favorite things about the song, like literally nothing has happened. Tell me what's happened. I go to a party and my crush is kissing someone else, maybe. And then I, I like storm out and I like walk home in my, in my heels on my silly little heels because I didn't wear my silly little trainers and I'm going home to my parents' house because I live with my parents because I'm 17. I don't know, I just think it's really honest and like funny and wonderful. Sort my fringe out, momentary break. Uh, Pre-chorus again, chorus again. You've already had it. Middle eight, one of my favorite sections. What am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? All of my stupid friends. Is it all of our or all of my stupid friends? What am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? All of our stupid friends know that I'm here for you. Guess I misunderstood. Thought you liked me too. So, listen, I love middle eights so much. I think they're the crown jewel of songwriting. And this one felt so anthemic. Like when we wrote it, it was just like a big moment. And I can just picture, you know, playing the song live and everyone being like, all of our stupid friends, now that I'm here for you, guess I misunderstood. Thought you liked me too. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play that, play that bit live. It is one of my favorite lyrics of the song because it just feels so, so teenagers, so like, oh, my stupid friends know that I'm here for you and your stupid kissing Karen from sociology. Rawr. What am I doing? What am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? Everyone told me so. Don't wait around for you. Guess I misunderstood. Thought you liked me too. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, 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 ow. Um, and that's all I will say on the matter. Then you have chorus. And you have post chorus, do 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 na na na, do 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 na na na, uh, which we actually wrote like a bunch of times. The post chorus is the bit of the song that took us the most amount of time to get right, and we must have gone through like five or six different options before we settled on the sort of do 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 na na na. And then maybe my favorite part of the whole song is the outro. You're not the one, not the one, no, not the one, not the one, no. Not the one note. Okay, lyrically, maybe it's not my, you know, my most ambitious of pieces, but I just love an outro. I think they're so... Explosion. I'm just picturing, like, all the little sparkle emojis and, like, the, the little, like, love hearts emoji. Um, just picturing them everywhere. I just, mm, mm. I can't, just, so good. I just, I love an outro. And this outro is the perfect way to end the song. It's kind of like, you're swaying around, you're having your little solitary vibe he's not the one but it doesn't matter because you're vibing 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 excluding excluding negative vibes you know he doesn't want to kiss you it doesn't matter he's not the one not the one no he doesn't want to get to know you it doesn't matter he's not the one not the one no um and yeah i'm just truly thrilled that she actually exists and i had to fight this outro a couple times some people were like maybe we should we should take it out and i was like no outro stays there you have it that is my lyric analysis for my song, John Hughes Movie. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it was a little chaotic. Um, tee hee. Um, and yeah, big love. Shall see you soon. The builders are back, oh my fucking God.